today I'm going to show you how to make proper homemade cider, uh, which tastes a million times better than the rubbish you get in the shops or the pub. Um, this is a real McCoy, made from my own organic apples. Um, you can use pretty much any apples. Uh, dessert apples don't make such a good cider because it doesn't have enough acidity, it lacks a bit of kick. Um, so ideally, cooking apples or proper cider apples, if you've got them, um, are better, but any will do. Um, so these are my Bramley apple trees. I've got two of them and they produce tons of fruit every year. No pesticides or anything done onto these. Um, I never seem to have any problem with pests. I really don't think you need pesticides in your garden at all. So these are good, wholesome, lovely apples. And this is pretty much the only ingredient of cider. Um, we'll come to one other ingredient, yeast, later, but that's it. Apples and yeast, brilliant. Um, what could be more natural and pure than that? So first job is to pick as many apples as you can get your hands on. Either straight off the tree, uh, it's late October now, uh, these Bramleys are really ripe and ready to go. Lots of them have fallen on the ground, but that's absolutely fine. The windfalls are just as good. As long as they're not actually rotten, then chuck them in the barrow. Get as many as you can. There we go. Right. Next stage. So, we've got a wheelbarrow full of apples. We've given them a quick rinse with the hose just to get rid of any lumps of mud. And then we have to chop them up just into quarters, which is pretty simple. Uh, and then they go in the mashing device uh, now, not everyone has one of these, obviously. This is pretty cool. Um, so you basically turn the big handle and the apples get crushed. Wonderful. Um, if you haven't got one of these, which I guess most people haven't, um, you can use a garden shredder. It's actually much easier and quicker. Um, but I kind of feel like it's cheating and this thing's fun. Um, whatever you, or the alternative, the cheapest way to do it, is to put them in a bucket, just chop your apples, chuck them in a bucket, and then get a fence post or a brick and bash the hell out of them. It's hard work, but it, it, the end result is lots of squashed apples, which is all you need to move on to the next stage. Good exercise on a winter's day. Needs a bit of an oil, as you can tell. So the next stage uh, is the most exciting bit, and this is pressing the apples, for which you do need a press. Um, if you haven't got one, you can. There are some places that will squash your apples for you and squeeze out the juice. Um, but otherwise, yeah, if you're very good at DIY, you can find instructions as to how to make one of your own. Um, but I bought one. Um, this, is, this is a Vigo press and I think it's really good. It's my pride and joy, call me sad. Um, so, we've just finished mushing up a bucket full of apples. Um, I run them through the musher a couple of times because I think it gets them finer and you can get more juice out of them. So that goes on the top of this barrel, basket, whatever you want to call it. And then, look at this lovely stuff. This is all the crushed up apple. And that goes in the top. And then we whiz it through. So it's well and truly pulverized. So, we filled up this kind of barrel with all the beautifully squished apple. 
And now it's time to squeeze the juice out, which is always the most exciting part. So, we sit that on top. Get the whole thing roughly in the middle. As it kind of squishes at an angle and you don't get all the juice out. <laughs> Taste. I tell you this stuff is the best, the absolute dogs. Looks a bit rough, but I tell you, it tastes amazing. So much better than the carton stuff from the supermarket. That is fantastic. But I mustn't drink it all because then I won't get any cider. Right, and then we have to take the juice and put it into a fermenting vessel. So here we've got some fermenting vessels. So these are big plastic barrels, basically. Uh, I'm just gonna pour the juice in. Look at all that goodness. You can buy these off the internet or if you happen to have a brew shop nearby, they don't cost too much. There we go, so I get just over a gallon out of each press. Uh, I've got a few more to go, unfortunately, to fill that one up. So time to press on, I guess. It saves wasting this stuff. Uh, the turkeys and chickens absolutely love all the, uh, the dried, squashed bits of leftover apple. There we go. Right, you have to leave a bit of space in the uh, top of the barrel because when it ferments it bubbles up and if, if you haven't got some space in there it bubbles out the top and goes everywhere. So all we do now is be tricking some yeast. So this is cider yeast but wine making yeast will do. Don't use beer yeast though because it doesn't settle as well. Um, but champagne yeast is supposed to be very good but this is this is proper cider yeast. I'm just going to put about half a sachet in this one. Um, you can not bother with the yeast, because apples are naturally covered in yeasts, wild yeasts. But it's a bit hit and miss. I've done it, and uh, it usually works and ferments fine, but um, it's not quite so guaranteed to work, whereas this stuff is uh, will do the job for certain. So the job of the yeast is to... It ferments the sugar in the, in the apple juice and turns it into alcohol and as a byproduct it produces carbon dioxide which has to escape um, so you put an airlock on the top which allows the carbon dioxide out but prevents fruit flies and things that might bacteria or whatever getting in so this is the idea of this is basically the, the carbon dioxide can bubble out I'll just give you a quick demo like that so 
Uh, so we stick that on the top, uh, screw this down tight, uh, and then I'm just going to stick the whole lot in the shed. It's not, it doesn't need to be kept warm. This is, it's going to be quite cold the next few months because it's the end of October, but that's fine. It just ferments slowly, takes two or three months to ferment, um, and at the end of which the yeast will stop when it's run out of sugar and it will all settle to the bottom and the whole lot will go clear, um, usually by about January, February. And then if you're thirsty, uh, that is time for a drink. Um, so all you have to do then is just siphon off the clear liquid from the yeast which sits in the bottom and basically it's, it's good to go and it is absolutely fantastic stuff. So Blue Peter style, here's some I made earlier. This is last year's cider. So the cheapest thing I've found to put it into to, to serve it up is that you can buy these plastic bags in boxes and just siphon it in when it's finished fermenting. Um, and then I stick the whole box in the fridge and you, it's got a little tap on the side. And out comes your beautiful cider. Um, looks very like a rather dubious urine sample, but it tastes fantastic. So cheers.